This week on To the Contrary. We take an in-depth look at young feminists, why many millennials don't call themselves feminists, then the changing face of feminist activism. Bonnie or Bay, welcome to To the Contrary, a discussion of news and social trends from diverse perspectives. In this episode, we're focusing on the state of feminism from the perspective of young American women. Feminism is defined as the policy, practice, or advocacy of political, economic, and social equality for women. Millennial women are becoming more engaged in gender equality, but the majority still do not call themselves feminists. According to a poll by the Public Religion Research Institute, just fewer than half of American women between the ages of 18 and 35 identify as feminists. Some young women have even started to identify as anti-feminists. Recently, the hashtag why I don't need feminism stormed social media with women declaring their opposition to feminism. And yet, Research has shown a majority of millennials believe in feminist causes by a large margin. So why the disconnect? Some people just don't like taking up different banners or being put in like certain boxes or categories. I think when you ask people like, are you a feminist? It's definitely a loaded question. It's a personal decision. Um, but it does work out to the best of your interest to be considered or called a feminist. I think a lot more girls are starting to understand what it actually means to be a feminist and they're understanding the real definition, just that women and uh, men should have equal political, social, economic rights. One millennial woman who came around to believing in feminism is pop star Taylor Swift. She initially rejected the label, but now says she is a proud feminist after understanding the movement better. Pop culture has been awash in stars who campaign for women's rights, including Beyonce and Emma Watson. It's marvelous. We're in, in pop culture. We're, we've changed the reality. But it's not just here in the United States. It's worldwide. Feminists are girls and boys, men and women, women and men. It's together. We, we really carry that message. The Feminist Majority Foundation has a feminist campaign program. The Ms. Foundation has Ms. in the classroom. Now there's greater consciousness. All the feminist issues are majority issues. So, Francesca Chambers, are millennial women becoming more feminist? No, I don't think that they are, and I don't think that they necessarily need to be, Bonnie. Let's not get hung up on labels. Millennial women expect equality more than any other generation. And despite the fact that only one-fifth of Americans call themselves feminists, I think the vast majority of millennial women and all people in America really believe in equality of the sexes. I do, I think so, and I also think that feminism is having a rebirth. Well, at 47% of women between the ages of 18 and 35 calling themselves feminist, that sounds like a lot to me. It's not that it's not, not a lot, but you have to look at all the women who aren't calling themselves feminists as well. And I think part of the reason that, that they're not is one, because it is Yeah, but I'm talking about young women coming up, obviously. Yeah. You know, that, that cohort, almost mm. half feminist, that's a lot more than it was in the 70s. Absolutely. You know, when third wave feminism started. Absolutely. I mean, look at it. it feminism is a malign, deeply maligned term and a deeply misunderstood term as well. So the fact that young people, 47%, we're talking nearly half of young women, identify with a term that's poorly misunderstood and that people malign, I mean, that's, that's a huge number. So actually, yeah, I take that as a very good sign. I think there are actually probably many more who might but identify as feminist if they knew a different definition. But let me ask you, say, people malign. I remember, uh, what's his face, the the uh, right-wing talk show host, I can't think of his Rush name. Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh, feminazis. That was 15, 20 years ago. I don't hear maligning so much anymore. I hear embracing more now from young women. Is that how you see it? 
Well, you know, having been a, a public and out feminist uh, for all of my adult life at this point, I have noticed that, yes, people want to debate you every time you say you're a feminist. And I've noticed um, anecdotally that the men who most want to uh, debate the term feminist are also the ones who are most likely to look down your shirt. That's something I've realized <laughs> at the bars uh, growing up. But um, I do think that, you know, there's, there's an opportunity here to have a bigger conversation about what feminism means. And yes, we have stepped away Away from the model of Rush Limbaugh calling people feminazis, but are feminists attacked today? Absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah. just taken on a new form. I mean, I think without a doubt, I mean, Rush Limbaugh is still calling people feminazis, and I think yeah, but still... people aren't listening to Rush Limbaugh quite the way they were. Yeah, but look what happened ago. when he called Sandra Fluck um, uh, a slut a couple of years ago. So I think that the movement is definitely well. That was 08. That was also you know seven years ago. Oh my goodness! I just <laughs> no, aged <that> myself. <laughs> <laughs> I need That's feminism funny. now more yeah. than ever. No, but you know what? I think I see. I think I see both of your points. There is a lot more embracing of it, and it, the way it's entered pop culture recently. You know, people talk about Beyonce feminism, Taylor Swift feminism, and try to be dismissive of it. But the fact is, they're really helping making feminism, rebranding feminism making it cool, that's really important for young women. But let me ask you a question, because you have spent most of your adult life as a feminist organizer. If, the, if most people say, yeah, I'm for equal rights, whether they mean it or not, uh, between men and women, but they won't call themselves feminism, how about rebranding? Yeah, I'm so <laughs> glad you asked that question, because here's how much I care about uh, someone who says they don't identify as a feminist and they want to work for equal rights. I care this much. I don't care at all. And so I think we get too hung up on labels. And I think often we'll say, you'll hear people say feminism needs to be rebranded because it's a malign term. Okay. Or just use but, a different term. But the but fact is we, we haven't, yeah, yeah we, the, our primary problem is actually an organizing problem, Bonnie. It's not a marketing problem. We need to organize. The right wing is doing a much better job than the women's movement in terms of organizing on issues of See, key concerns. But also, isn't it the most sexist thing that feminism has a bad rap. I mean, more proof that we live in a patriarchal society, right? See, but what you just said is where you start to get people who tend to be on the right side of the spectrum upset. Just because you're on the right side of the spectrum does not mean that you can't be for feminism, that you can't be for equal rights. But didn't you just, just say because, earlier, why do we just, even need it? Well, no, I was saying why, uh, let me go back. Why do we even need feminism necessarily? That's a whole different argument because I think a lot of young people think that we don't necessarily need feminism because they already feel that we're treat being treated equally in society. I mean, when I look Except at my life, I don't, I don't feel, campuses. I don't feel that in the workplace that I'm being talked down to or that I'm being but treated being differently, paid less. being different than men. <laughs> uh, I do not think that I'm being paid less in my workplace. I do not think that okay. at all. Actually, you know? I have no idea whether she's paid less or more. But that's true. Uh, but. Like, the, but ge the gender pay gap does not emerge until the 40s. Nor most there, there, women PhDs, for example, or I'm sure it's true to a lesser extent, yeah, of college women. But PhDs make 98 percent of what their male counterparts but don't make. Most Republican it's women only when you turn 40 sense. and most likely have had kids or st dropped out of the workforce for a while and try to go back in. That's when the wage gap emerges. So she, being in her 20s, yeah. she wouldn't I would have also felt it yet. My question is, you <laughs> when, you grow up, when you grow further in your career and start feeling a wage gap and finding out about it, would that change your mind about feminism? If I thought that I was feeling a wage gap, then that would change my mind about that issue specifically. But but feminism is so much more than just so equal pay for equal work or so much more than contracep con contraception. I yeah. mean, it's also more than just rape culture on college campuses. There's so many know, different things like feminist. involved in this. And so I feel like by singling out one issue and saying that that, you know, if you're not for this one thing, if you're not for the government paying for contraception or if you're not for, you don't believe that you're being paid less than, you can't be a feminist. Like, I don't think that that's fair. I think that you can still be a feminist and be, by the definition of feminism, for women being treated equally to men and not necessarily agree with the left or the right on that issue. And I think it's being too politically charged and we shouldn't be exclusionary based on your political beliefs. It's about gender equality, like she says. I'm proud to call myself a Republican feminist in, in just the past couple of years because I don't believe that my party's leadership epitomizes how I feel about the issues. I agree with Francesca. It's a multitude of issues. And to me, a feminist is exactly what Beyonce had flashed behind her at the VMAs last year. Someone who believes in the political, economic, and social equality of the sexes. This is uh, it for me. So why do you stay in a party that is not 
not because no, I can change being it. Feminist I have to stay in the party to help change it, right? I can stand up and I can I can help these leaders get out of the spotlight. I want to be in the spotlight one day to talk about how women matter and how gender equality matters. I want to fight for that. The, the leadership right now, people like Todd Akin, who made national headlines, well, they and don't more speak recently, for me. like just way more recently, in early in mid 2015, there was some state rep somewhere who said sure. that if a woman gets pregnant during rape, it's a gift. Mm. A Republican. Of course. So is the war on women going to continue by the Republican Party? And, and or the so-called, I should say, war on women. Secondly, um, does that help feminists when men open their mouths and say things that they should have been <laughs> advised not to say? You make a great point. Or does point. it hurt? hurt it, it absolutely helps, I think, because it gives us a platform to say, hey, this is not for us. He doesn't speak for me. These state reps, these national reps, they're all kind of tripping over themselves. But they're people. They are going to make mistakes. They don't speak for an entire party. And it's a part of the party that I think is dying out. There's a moderate group of us. There's a moderate stronghold that are not afraid to call ourselves feminists. We don't think it's, it's a word that is, you know, defined by a political affiliation. And that's what I think, that gives me hope, at least. Uh, Rena, for chair of the <laughs> RNC. I mean, oh, well, I, thank you. I, I can't wait for it to happen. And I, think, I actually, I think this is a really important discussion, and I'm really glad to hear you openly identifying as feminist and also as a Republican feminist, because the fact of the matter is these issues should not be partisan, and the, the partisan divide has actually greatly hurt the advancement of feminism. No and if you look at the history of feminism, actually there has been uh, there have always been feminists on all sides of the political spectrum, and so it takes all hands on deck, and I do. I mean, I'm not, I'm still not the partisan, the Republican wait, wait, Party, wait, 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 how is the partisan divide, explain please, hurt feminism? In oh, Europe? yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I think looking at it from my lens, and in particular as someone who really wants to see more bold movement within the women's movement, which is by and large deeply progressive, um, it, it, what you see is there's too much alignment right now between the establishment uh, women's movement and the Democratic Party, and that deeply, deeply hurts the movement because what happens is you have a uh, women's movement that is caught in this never-ending cycle of electionitis, right? Where it's like, let's try to elect someone who's, who, is, who doesn't say that rape is wonderful because then you get a baby, just like what Rena was talking about, because the opposition is so bad. What happens then is, that, is there actually any real movement toward women's equality? Are there any policy goals moving forward beyond these election cycles? Most of these bills, frankly, Bonnie, at this point, that you You're do have You're talking about the anti-abortion... You're talking about the, what, 350 anti-abortion bills that have come up for a vote in the House in the last year? Well, you look at the, the massive proliferation of anti-abortion rights legislation, both at the state level, especially at the Defunding state Defunding Planned Parenthood. I mean, All it's been of consistent. It. Yeah, and you look at that, and, and you see that, you know, the primary response coming out of the Democratic Party, and in increasingly also just the women's movement in general is let's fight back and stop these attacks. You know, we don't need to fight back and stop these attacks. We don't need to protect something. Things are worse than they were before Roe v. Wade. In the Commonwealth of Virginia, for example, right now there are more restrictions on abortion today than there were before the Roe v. Wade decision. And so actually this idea of protecting and this defensive mode is deeply problematic and it's not advancing and, the women's And movement you're at all. suggesting instead what? I think letting all those laws become law? and then giving something to oh, young women oh, to fight for? Oh, no, absolutely, no. absolutely not. That is not what I'm saying. I'm saying that while there needs to be a very clear political and policy fight, what is missing, the missing element right now, is more of a grassroots power-building effort that really focuses on what do women need, what is human dignity for women, you know, really not focusing on trying to elect specific candidates, because politicians may do good things sometimes, but they're never your friends, and politicians don't lead a movement, nor should a party. Does, fe does the feminist movement, such as it is right now, need to embrace more women of color? Yes. We need to embrace more people, period. Not just women. Women of color, people of color, more young people. You know what I was thinking is, when is this going to stop? I mean, I went through this myself in my journey of becoming a feminist and embracing uh, myself as a feminist. And you're right. I don't think that anyone should ever tell you, if you identify as a feminist, to be like, actually, you're not because of A, B, and C. I think if, I think if you just said it, then you are it. But when is this going to stop? This whole, I'm not a feminist, but... 
You are. What do you believe in? You the believe in equality of the sexes. You believe in equality of the sexes, and <laughs> but yes, wait a you minute. are. You just said, "Don't fight it." Now you're fighting it. No, but I wouldn't actually. You know, say that to them. But I'm just saying that it's wrong to tell someone if they're not. Like that's not what I was telling Francesca earlier. But I, I wonder when it's going to stop, and we can just embrace it without the but. Well, all right. Well, we we got to run <laughs> okay. on to the next segment. Let us know what you think. Please follow me on Twitter at Bonnie Urbe. From young feminists to second wave feminists. Some feminists from older generations have criticized millennial feminists for being armchair activists who spend their time campaigning online but doing very little outside of the net. Millennial feminists have complained their contributions are underappreciated. Feminist icons like Gloria Steinem say it's time to acknowledge the work of millennials more. They're way more feminist than we were. Nothing we do ever seems to be quite enough because our hopes exceed possibilities, but I'm very, very proud of young women. She points to the work young women are doing already on issues such as pay equity. Women are very mad on campus that they are graduating with a huge amount of debt, the same debt as a male student, but will earn about a million dollars less over their work life to pay it back. They're mad. You know, they don't need me to <laughs> tell them they're mad. I need to listen to them so that we uh, can share tactics and work together. A lot of the, the activism that's happening on social media is very important and I think it's very valid. Um, and I think that you can't necessarily disconnect that from actually doing on the ground work and on the ground action. And I think they work in coordination with one another and support one another. People talk about armchair activism and how that may not be enough, but that might be the only thing that you're able to provide to the movement. So Gloria Steinem, no you know, greater person to quote in this regard than she, says young feminists are more radical, more active than women of her generation. Is, do you agree and how, if so? In my experience as a feminist organizer, absolutely yes. That's the truth. The heart of the women's movement today is actually being led by young women. It's being led online and in the streets. And I think there's... Which is more important? Actually, activism outside or uh, online? I think it's a false distinction, actually. I think it's all activism and it all feeds into each other. And this idea that online activism is only applicable to the online space just simply isn't true. Look at, for example, when the Komen Foundation decided to pull funding from Planned Parenthood because of an ideological crusade um, within the board. What happened was there was outrage, massive outrage on Twitter, there were real changes immediately following that. And so I think it's silly to, to perpetuate this divide. We, it's not just feminism. It's our entire lives are online now, too. So I think that divide is kind of silly. But yes, I think young people are absolutely leading this movement forward. And it's, it's troubling to see that sometimes you do see some older feminists, and I don't want to say all, but there is a subset of older feminists who really do take that viewpoint of where are the young women? Well, they're, they're everywhere. What are they? talking about um, and perhaps well is it like right like many other movements like all other movements that older women are in charge and younger women <laughs> want to take over and run the movement. Well, and I think it's important, yes, and I think one thing that's really important to consider is the boundaries of womanhood have changed so dramatically in a few generations. And so... How? To, uh, precisely the opportunities that are available, the fact that millennials do expect equality, the fact that women expect that they should be able to work and make as much money to, to enter any profession they want, whether that's construction, whether that's becoming the CEO, whether that's becoming president of the United States and finding that a realistic dream. So the fact is that, you know, when you have that set of expectations that you're grown up with in credit, in large credit to older feminists who fought very, very, very hard for that, the goalposts are shifting. And it's okay for movements to shift and for people to get more progressive and to have new questions and new solutions that they're seeking. Ironically, in our fight to fight sexism, there's a huge issue of ageism that comes in in these movements. And I think that as a young woman, so a lot of times... So are you saying older feminists are ageist against younger feminists? Not all of them. Of course not all of them. In fact, Elise Neal is one of my greatest mentors. And I think what the Feminist Majority Foundation and what she personally does to encourage young women to join this movement, I mean, yes, I'm biased, but it's really extraordinary. And I feel like that was one of the first organizations to really do that. I mean, that emphasis on young women. I, the... Um, I think it's the largest pro-choice network in the world. They're college groups, so it's really important. 
Uh, I just wanted to respond to that and say that I just don't think that it is just the feminist movement that has this problem, right? I think pretty much every political organization, right. company, yeah. organization, period, there's the young people who are up and coming and like, I yeah. know what's best, and the old, older people are saying, no, okay, like bless your parents. it up. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like your parents, <laughs> this is any family. I mean, I think that's just a, a natural order of things is that the younger people, you know, want to lead and, and the older people want to tell them, like, you need to look, have a few things that you need to learn. And But the other thing I wanted to, to go back to what you said and something we talked about in the last segment about the expectations expectation that younger women have to, to be treated equally. That is part of the reason why I had said that I think a lot of young women do not think that we need feminism anymore is because already what has changed so dramatically is the expectation that not only should we be treated equally, but we will be treated equally on all these different fronts. And I'm I not sure, but I, I have to tell you, having, you know, watched the movement as a teenager mm -hmm. when uh, it was being run by, by Gloria and, and you know, other people of her, of her ilk. Um, I don't think their expectations were any different. I really don't. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about the within the movement. I'm talking about broadly, like young young women now and going back. I'm I'm talking about even a wave before the glorious. In many Steinem ways, we're still of, we're you know. still fighting the same battles. I think that's why that vigor hasn't changed. You can call it whatever you want, but that passion hasn't changed because we're still fighting equality. Whether okay, and what's what's left? What what do you not have? Oh my goodness! Come Everything. On. No, I mean, I mean let, 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 let me tell you what something. Is, people maybe, want, right. Let me tell you something. Okay, in Bangladesh, it's maybe equal inheritance laws. In America, what could it be? Okay. Uh, there's so much stuff. Oh my God, sex discrimination, paid wage leave. inequality, paid maternity leave. What is up with that in this country? It goes on and on. So your context and the years may change, but we're still fighting for the, the same end goal. And yes, yes to all of those things. We also need to see a dramatic improvement for reproductive rights. And I don't mean rolling back these new restrictions. I think that we need to ensure that as a matter of human dignity, that every woman has access to the health care that she needs to determine the course of her life, that that's funded, that that's not segregated away, that there's no discrimination and mystification from people who just frankly oppose women's rights in general. So that's one big piece. Um, also looking, again, it, you, Looking at the workplace, unfortunately at this point, a lot of the movement seems kind of stalled. It's focused largely on paid sick days. We need paid parental leave, period, sure. for everyone. That's an issue we nationally. can all get behind yeah. because it's about economics, honestly. And, and these are the issues we have over here. We're not like Bangladesh, for example, in India where these child brides are you know, still getting into marriages and being forced. And these are the issues. We've transcended these But things. both Bangladesh and India also have had female leadership at the very, very Well, that's a whole America different thing. It's a happened. shame on this country. Ways, I mean, this country country is 97th in terms of in the world oh, no. in, terms in terms of, of percentage of women in the legislature <laughs> you know the Congress. I, ho I hope in my lifetime we can see that change but it's been terrible historically we have been behind I agree but I think the we really should get behind these issues that we can get everybody on all ends of the political spectrum behind how is how important is it to bring men into the movement very important. Absolutely. Very important. They're the other 50. What are you doing? They're the other leadership. They're sitting here. You know, I think millennial men get it. I'm married to one. I think they get it. We don't well, have okay, to do they too get much. it, but don't they? <laughs> is, is, isn't there a difference between getting it and getting active? Well, Yes, there is. But I also think they've grown up, their peers have been a little bit different than what <laughs> our peers were. I think I grew up with a lot more sexist young men than, um, than my husband's peers, I guess, today. We have covered, <laughs> there's certainly a growing men's movement in terms of involving men in the fight for gender justice, in terms of doing equal care, home care, child well, they care, also don't get right. and, giving, and giving women more time to get educated, uh, c pursue careers. It's great. It's great for everyone. It's great for men to be more involved. Fathers, if you're talking about parenting, it's great for Our women. Are millennial it's men? Great for children. Are millennial men well, splitting it 50-50? That's, that's a really interesting yeah. question because you know, A, I would like to see more reporting on this. I mean, it seems like the big gotcha is for women, are you a feminist? Why are we not asking that question yeah. of men? Mm -hmm. And if they say no, why not? Why not? And, yeah. and I think that's a question we should be asking both of young men. But particularly those men in power who are leading corporations that don't offer paid leave, who are in the legislator in the legislatures and pushing anti-abortion laws. Do you believe that women are equal? If so, why? If not, why not? And that's a question that everyone should be made to answer, not just women. And so I do think this broader idea of should we focus more on men? Absolutely, all hands on deck.
Well, it's not just should we should we focus more on men, but again, going back to the political argument, you know, and you said there's not that many women in the legislature. See, that's an area where it's totally bipartisan, where you're not going to turn off one side or the other when you when you talk about just getting more women generally into the legislature. Absolutely. And I think that is an area where you could really bring people together and bring feminists together on that issue. And then the other thing that I wanted to say was about the men. Uh, I do think that's another area where you could get a lot of women on board. I don't think most women want to have to stay at home and be the only person who's staying at home taking care of a new baby and not have the ability uh, to go back to work and have their husband stay at home instead. I definitely worry about that. That is why I've told all of you so many times <laughs> that I am not having kids. I'm saying it for the record right now because I feel in my job that I cannot take six weeks, eight weeks off of my job and just come back in and everything's going to be okay. My husband might be able to do that, but I have the leave time, not him. So I think there's a lot of women who could get on board with that. That's Your sexism. thoughts about bringing <laughs> oh, well, he for she, Emma Watson, got behind that and pushed it out there. I think it was a great thing, but I, I don't know that we're going to see real any, I, I guess we're not going to see real change from that anytime soon. I don't know that we have. It's brought some awareness, but has that awareness done anything to these policy discussions? Have we seen change in policy? I don't know. So I think we need to give it some more time to bring men into the conversation. Very quickly and last, Erin, uh, are do you see, should men be running feminist organizations? Are you ready to give power to men to bring them into the movement? Well, that's an Onion article, you know, Bonnie. There really is. But the feminists have gotten together and they've figured out that the men should run the women's organizations. Look, no. men should be in leadership as well and share that leadership. But I think it's absolutely a feminist thing to put women first. And so men should also know to step back. Have All five. right, that's it for this edition. Please follow me on Twitter and visit our website, pbs.org slash to the contrary. And whether you agree or think to the contrary, see you next week.